Let us talk about the functions of objects. And before we take up all the functions, let us write down the site where these auxins are synthesized. So site of synthesis of these auxins is the apical meristem. Or it is also written as apices of roots and stems. So the tip of the root and stem where these apical meristems are present, that is the place where these auxins are synthesized. Now let us talk about the functions and using these or understanding these functions, how uh, can we use these auxins for various applications? First function, auxins promote cell division. It promotes cell division. And now we will see that the property or the function of auxin, how can it be used for the tissue culture or other techniques. The second function is, it initiates root formation. Initiates lateral root formation. Third function of auxins, is it shows apical dominance. Apical dominance. That means as long as the tip of the stem or root is functional, it will not let the lateral buds grow. So apical means we are talking of the apical bud that is at the terminal position. And as long as that apical bud or terminal bud is there or is growing, it will not let the lateral buds grow. So apical bud prevents or inhibits the development of lateral buds. And this is what happens in case of plants normally that the apical bud, stem tip and the root tip which are there, they keep secreting auxins and because of which the plant grows in height or length. And once it attains a certain height, then its branching starts and branches develop from these lateral buds. So as long as apical bud is controlling or dominating, lateral buds will not grow. Another function of auxins, it promotes flowering in pineapple. Next function of auxins, it induces parthenocarpy. in tomatoes. One more function which is seen is about the leaf form or fruit form. Now auxins work differently on leaf fall and fruit fall at different time periods. We can say it prevents leaf fall or premature, premature leaf fall and fruit fall. That means it would prevent the young leaves and young fruits or unripe fruits from falling off. But when the leaves turn old and the fruits mature, then auxins promote abscission. So it promotes abscission in old leaves and mature or ripened fruits. So it does not let the young leaves and fruits fall off, 
but when they mature then it helps in formation of or in their abscission or form. Next function of auxin is it helps in xylem differentiation. So during tissue differentiation it helps in xylem formation or xylem differentiation. So these are the main functions of auxins. It promotes cell division whenever auxin is available cells would divide and as they are present in the apical meristem the meristematic cells they continuously divide. So it is promoting that. It initiates lateral root formation. So whenever branching of the root has to take place, auxins help in that. Apical dominance, which is a very, very important term, it means that as long as the apical bud is active, it is producing this auxin. And that apical bud prevents or it dominates and prevents the development of lateral buds. So lateral buds which give rise to branches, branching would not take place as long as the apical bud is present because it is going to dominate. It promotes flowering in pineapple, in tomatoes, parthenocarpi, fruit fall or leaf fall of premature leaves is prevented but it helps in leaf fall and fruit fall when they mature and in xylem differentiation. Now, Using these functions, let us understand the applications of uh, these things. So, let the functions be here and we will discuss the applications. Applications means how we are going to use these functions for the different agricultural technique or tissue cultural techniques and all. First, and we will take it function by function. If it promotes cell division, then auxin can be used in callus formation in tissue culture. So, used in tissue culture. If you are able to recall the steps of tissue culture, we take a plant part which is known as explant. And then it is placed on a medium which contains auxins and cytokinins in the same concentration. And auxins and cytokinins, they promote cell division, only cell division, not the differentiation. And that cell division results in formation of a lump of cells which we call callus. This is one application. Second application, it says it helps in lateral root formation. So, how can we use it for our benefit? Stem cuttings, when we are uh, performing this uh, vegetative propagation artificially and we cut a stem, that stem cutting can be dipped in the auxin solution and from that cut piece of stem, lateral roots would develop. So, it is used to obtain plants from stem cutting plants from stem cutting so the cut piece of stem would be dipped in oxen and immediately very uh, soon the lateral roots would originate and then we can use it as a plant that means the chances of that stem cutting developing into a plant are high as the root formation is initiated. Same thing is also used to prevent weeds. 2,4-D and 2,4-5-P are used as weedy sites. Used as weedy sites. Weedy sites are the substances or chemicals which would kill the weeds and auxins are very effective in killing dicot weeds which are also known as broad leaved weeds. So kills dicot or broad leaved weeds. Now how does this work? When these and it is not effective on monocots. 2,4-D and 
for 5T, they do not cause any damage to monocot. So, do not cause damage to monocots. Now, where can this be used? Normally, gardeners use it when they have to develop a weed-free lawn. In lawns, we grow grasses and grasses are monocots. But in that uh, lawn, there could be these dicot weeds. We want to get rid of this. So if we spray or if this gardeners, they spray 2,4-D or 2,4-5-T, then these dicot or broadleaf weeds would be killed. How are they killed? We said that they promote root formation. So if we just simply draw a structure, say this is a root and these are the branchings. 2,4-D would promote root formation and if we are using it in slightly higher concentration, these root formation would take place at a very fast rate and for that many cells would divide forming deformed structures or in the uh, they would be in the form of tumors and those cells which are formed they would block the xylem and phloem of the roots and when that conducting tissue is blocked conduction of trans, uh, so transport of food and water would be stopped or blocked and because of that these plants would die so we are using this property for our benefit when we want to initiate root formation in stem cutting, we use less concentration. And we want, when we want this thing to happen at a faster pace, we are using them as weedy sites. But we have to remember that auxins, they are very effective in killing dicot plants and they do not cause any damage to monocots. So even if we spray them in a lawn, Nothing would happen to the grass and only the dicot weeds would be killed. So this is another use using the same property. Apical dominance. Now let us take uh, further applications uh, starting with apical dominance. So the next application. Next one. This one was using this functional property of oxygen. Now let us talk about apical dominance. We said the property of apical dominance means as long as the apical bud is present, it would not let the lateral bud formation. So cutting the tips of root or roots and stems or branches would promote lateral branching and this the farmers use to make the hedge dense. Now the purpose of hedge is like blocking the farm or um, a field from the grazing animals. The farmers don't want that the grazing animals should come in through these hedges. So the hedge should be very very dense and it would become dense only when the lateral branching takes place. So what they do is they keep cutting the tips of these hedge plants and when tips are being cut what exactly is happening is they are removing the terminal bud which is dominating due to presence of oxygen. So as soon as the tip is removed the apical dominance is removed and now lateral branching would take place. So this is used to make the hedge thick and branched. The same thing is also used to obtain bonsai. We know bonsai making technique and uh, uh, the plants which are sold normally like if we purchase a normal a uh, banyan tree or any normal plant it would cost us very very less but if the same plant is sold in the form of a bonsai bonsai means the plant tall trees are restricted to a short height and the length is not allowed to increase but the girth increases the branchings take place 
and that is also achieved by cutting the tips. So those who make bonsai, what they do is, as soon as the new branch arises, they chop off the tip. So what exactly they are doing is, they are removing the apical bud and this apical bud has auxins or in other words we can say they are removing the auxins which is responsible for elongation. So if that is removed the plant will not elongate and it will remain short. So for bonsai making same thing is used the tips are removed. Another application using the same uh, things it promotes flowering in pineapple if there is there are more flowers there would be more fruits so more flowering in pineapple and specifically this is seen in case of only pineapple and that's why we have to use this example only in pineapple that means more fruit formation more fruit, fruit formation. Then one more function is that it induces parthenocarpy in tomatoes. Parthenocarpy is seed formation without fertilization. Oh sorry, fruit formation without fertilization. So when fruit is formed without fertilization, those fruits are seedless. So to obtain seedless fruits, One more function which we wrote here and now we erased it because we wanted to write the applications here. That function was that it prevents premature leaf and fruit fall. So oxen can be sprayed on the crops when we want to prevent premature leaf fall. Pre, it prevents premature leaf fall. Leaf and fruit fall and if the fruits do not fall early many times we see in uh, fruiting uh, plants that uh, these unripe fruits also they fall off but if they can be prevented and if they are allowed to grow on the plant the productivity is going to increase so we know the functions and using the same functions we are using those functions in terms of applications and those applications are used in various fields of agriculture. So this is our uh, phytohormone auxin and we have seen in most of the cases it is acting as a promoter. It acts as only inhibitor or it acts as not a promoter in case of abscission but that is only when the old leaves and the old fruits have to fall off. Otherwise, it is promoting uh, most of the uh, functions or processes. So, this is our first phytohormone. Now, we will take up the next phytohormone.